we're in a period of transition, transitioning from goal setting to implementation. But history won't remember the New York Declaration or the Paris Agreement or Agenda 2030 if we fail to follow through on those processes. The compact must recognise that at its core, climate displacement is an issue of justice and that migrants moving as a result of the impacts of climate change or of related issues exacerbated by climate will in large part represent the most vulnerable in our society and the least responsible for the causes of climate change. With whole communities and in some cases potentially countries threatened with displacement and the need to migrate, we must consider the need to protect their cultural heritage and self-determination. This is central to allowing for migration with dignity. And we have examples of countries like Kiribati, whose president has prepared by buying land in Fiji for a potential migration with dignity. And he's talking about a whole people. If we want to ensure that the substance of the compact reaches the furthest behind first, then we need to have them in the room. Not protesting outside, not watching as their crops wilt while we speak, but present and engaged, telling us their stories and their needs and ensuring that they, not us, are at the centre of the response to migration today and in the future. It was the great suffering of the Second World War that actually gave birth to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 and the Refugee Convention in 1951 and the IOM. At that time, the world came together in the face of terrible degradations to the human spirit and created something that showed we could do better. It's now our turn, in difficult circumstances as we all acknowledge, to undertake a similar journey, to develop new pathways for the thousands, indeed millions of people on the move now and in the future, fleeing war, poverty and environmental degradation.